This is part four of the Mopar ammeter to voltage meter conversion. Okay, it's been about a half an hour to 45 minutes. We're doing something else here. So, I am just going to pull this apart here. Look at that. That is damn near perfect. If anything, it might be <laughs> like literally eighth of an inch high. No, not even a, a big eighth, small sixteenth. But that looks pretty damn good. Just for uh, shits and giggles here, I'm going to get a voltage source and I'm going to see how uh, whether it operates <laughs> before I start doing it anymore so we'll do that next okay my little battery source here what I'm going to do clip on To these leads now according to let's look at my instructions here I will fast forward on this so okay I found my voltage source the instructions talk about a source being marked positive and one being marked negative. I looked, there is nothing on the original case here that I can see. Not on the inside or the outside. There's nothing on the bracket that was going through that. I literally do not see what they were talking about. So, having said that, I looked at the back and there was some resistors on the back. So I'm thinking that it was, that's the positive. So we're going to try it out and see. I don't, I'm going to do it quick, see if it moves. It, it, I, I think if it is backwards, it would just pin the needle down. But I'll do it very quick and we'll try it out. All right. Click on. Oh, okay. So I went the right way. There you go. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Look at that. We have a voltmeter. Now I will check my voltage on this unit and let's see what it is compared to where it marks on the needle. Okay, I have my voltmeter now hooked up, and we're going to see what the voltage is. So we are reading 12.5 volts. That is, I think, just about where I want to be. I'm thinking the car's gonna the car's gonna probably run at about 13 
anywhere between 13.2 and 13.6 in that neighborhood, and that might put me right in the middle and right where I want to be. So again, a voltmeter is just a relative thing. You have a voltmeter because you want to kind of monitor your system. If your uh, needle is down, that would mean your alternator is puked. And if it's, uh, say, way high, that could mean that your regulator, voltage regulator, is puked on your car. So this is just a good monitor, and I think it's going to work out fantastic. So very happy with how it turned out so far. So let's uh, get it mounted. I'm just noticing something here. This one's not bad because I've been playing with it. But, having said that, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see that. There's a dust. So I'm going to try this. This is a brand new paintbrush. I'd say that looks pretty darn good. I'll do that to the whole speedometer here, or the whole instrument cluster, all of them. Okay, I'm going to show you something here. If I push this old, I'll try to get the best view here. Here is the old, or the, the new. voltmeter on here and this is the old amp meter and if I push them side by each just about the same distance and they went against they were the voltmeter was sort of supported by these old pieces that I cut out of there so what I'm going to try and do I'm going to try and do something to replicate that to has pressure against the back. It's got to be big now because I cut those holes quite big. So I want to see what I can do. I think maybe some sort of holes or something might work, but I'll, uh, I'll try and figure that out just to give it a little extra support. Cause right now it's just really being hold, held on by these two little screws here. And I think long-term bouncing around that isn't going to work very well. So, I'll see what I can figure out. Okay, I have found some little, looks like they're little standoff bushings. If you compare this side by each, it's almost at the same size where if I cut off one of these sides here, it would be about what it was before. Plus, I think once I get that cut down, this is the micarta piece. I could put that probably like that. And I think that thickness will be perfect. And that'll go against the inside of the case. And then on the outside of this uh, instrument case here, on the outside, I'm going to put some sort of solid plastic piece and rivet it on the back there. And then I think that's going to make it all work good. So we'll try that. All right, I, I cut the end off. That's what it looked like before. So I cut it just under that rounded part. So now the hole looks like it'll fit on here. Again, this is very fragile. I'm going to kind of hold it by this and I'm going to screw this on in actually it's a perfect size hole it screws on very easily but it is held on there nice there now well, it's got a solid backing I like that. These don't quite fit through the holes, but close, but they're not centered, so it should grab on it somewhere. So I'm going to cut the other one and I'll screw that one on. So we'll do that next. Yeah, I have the second one cut and put on. 
So there's my solid backing. That will go against the inside back of the of the instrument cluster. And actually what I'm going to do too, I've got that micarta piece on here. That will assist in non-shorting against the case. I actually got an idea. I might put some heat shrink on this and come out a little further. I got an idea. Okay, here are my holes in the case. And now with those standoffs, I was going to show you how it fits into this. So before when I dropped it in, it would just kind of flop down because it was only really supported in these little grooves here. So the other meter fits on top of that and snugs it down. But now, you can kind of see behind there a little bit, those pieces I just added on there are sitting on the edge of the back. It is actually quite solid. So that's going to support that very well. So I'm going to try and lift this up and show you what it looks like underneath. There you can see that. So I, I believe what I'm going to do is again get that plastic piece to keep them in place, put it in so it doesn't stop, so it doesn't touch the sides. And I think it's going to work out really well. This is the bracket that they used to clamp down the, uh, the original style of uh, that voltage uh, gauge that I put in. I'm thinking, why don't I use this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flatten these downs and then once they're long like this, I'll just maybe drill a couple holes, rivet it, and then the insulation is there. The right depth or right centered holes, perfect for that thing. I think this will work fantastic. Try it out. That's the end of part four. Stay tuned for part five.